welcome to day 10 of the 30 day coding challenge from CSM Math. And uh, we're finally going to get to graphing the equation uh, in our graphing calculator. And um, CT is, a, is an abbreviation for computational thinking. This is one of the pillars I talked about called algorithmic thinking. We're going to try to focus on today creating code or an algorithm that sweeps across and paints points. So I'm going to take the code from yesterday, paste it in here uh, from challenge uh, 9, and we'll get started. So just to refresh your memory, uh, from challenge 9 what we did was we added in a character. I also forgot to talk about pixelation, so I've, um, some of you might have found that your image was too big. You either have to resize that image so it's like 30, 50 pixels, something fairly small, otherwise it end, ends up taking over the screen. So sorry for getting about that. We also put in this size parameter, or the size variable, I should say, that uh, goes in and makes the code a little cleaner. So we can adjust the variable size. So I just scrolled through all the code there. You could rewatch that if you, for some reason, didn't have it. This makes a pretty tiny grid. Let's set that size back to 200, the way we originally had it. Um, so 200 in all directions. There we go. I'm going to pull this over. And you got to just kind of pull this over and it will make it a little bit bigger to fit, fit the area you have left for it. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about the algorithm that, that would sweep across. So I'm going to play an animation of it and I want you to think about it. All right, when I put this in here and I started graphing it, I realized that we should clean up this mistake. I actually took the size when I was doing it yesterday and I adjusted it by dividing 200 by 4. That should have been 200 divided by 5 to get the increment of 40. So I didn't catch that yesterday, but when I graphed this here, I did. So if I play this now, notice that it's going to graph this parabola. And it looks like, like a parent parabola, right? Like 1, uh, one, one when you square 1, it equals 1. When you square 2, it equals 4. So it actually looks like a parent parabola, even though it's not quite because of the scaling of our pixels. But think about how does that algorithm work, do you think? It's a sweeping type motion. Uh, one thing you might have noted right away is that it's red. It's a little thicker. So that code would, ooh, sorry, I actually just gave you the answer there. Wasn't planning on doing that. So the uh, pen color is red and the size of the pen is three. But the question would be for kids, like well, how in the world would we get the pen to drag across and graph whatever equation we wanted? Now, you could actually have kids write down on paper in words what they think or put like what you might call pseudocode and actually try to write down how, the, how they think that works. I decided to skip that for time's sake today and just walk through it with you. Um, but the algorithm would have to be like, well, we want the, the process to start on the left-hand side. So we're going to have to declare a variable called x. And if we're all the way on the left, that would be negative 200. Right, and we also have to initiate a value for like the y position. Although you don't have to call them x and y. Remember, those are just variable variable names. You can call those anything. And there's no telling how high the the y would be when you plug it into the function when you get to that point. So it really doesn't matter what you initially call the y. Okay, so that would start the pen, or in this case, I have my character, and you might have a character in there all the way to the left hand side. Except for we haven't told them to go there yet. You know what I mean? We'd have to use a go to or a set position command uh, to do that. So remember, we don't really want the y to be zero, but we are going to have to probably initiate it before. Uh, we'll eventually kind of branch this out to a function, but we're going to want to reset that equal to an equation. Why don't we just make a line first, like y equals x? That's just a, a line with a slope of 1 and an intercept of 0 that would just streak across. So that's usually the easiest one to start with is just a basic line. Let's make them equal to each other. And then I would say, okay, y equals x now. And I want to do t dot go to that x comma y location. Now notice how this is not a static location. This can change if we change the value of x and y, right? So right now if I play this, it is going to do everything. Um, but it would go to x, y. How did we graph that? Interesting. 
that's very coincidental that the program ended up here and then when it went all the way over to the left because now this point down in the corner is negative 200 uh, negative 200 but it actually didn't graph this line so just to make sure that we're seeing that if i put a negative here like let's say i try to graph y equals negative x and streak it across here and i try to run that right it's not actually going to graph the line it's just setting the pen position right equal to whatever we're saying so this one would set it to, to negative x which is at positive 200 here if that makes sense so the first step in the algorithm is get that pen set on the left hand side well let's just set that back to y equals positive x now you might have already been thinking what we're going to do algorithmically is we want to keep rerunning this uh, in a loop so we are going to do a for loop probably for item in range Let's set this, I uh, know how we have this at negative 200. Let's set that to size. Remember we set a variable for all the 200s called size. So x equals negative size. So for item in range, <coughs> we're going to have to do this 400 times because remember it's 200 on each side. So this is actually going to be, let's just make it 2, uh, shift 8 is how you get the times, 2 times size, which is going to be do this 400 times. And then we would tab this in. But the x is just going to stay at negative 200, right? So if I ran this code, let me forget the uh, colon. If I executed this code right here, again, coincidentally, it does draw that in. What I could do is actually, uh, after I originally set this up, what I'm probably going to want to do is um, do t dot uh, pen up. Let's just put that in there now. That way, um, before it actually ever goes anywhere, before it actually ever doesn't go to, the pen will be up. So now if I run that, uh, the pen was up this time when it went over here. Notice nothing draws because the, the x value is still at 200. And I could verify that by saying print x. And if I run this really quick, it prints that x every time. Notice how it looped a lot, right? 400 times. I don't know why it won't let me do that, but... Um, the value you saw was negative 200. So print commands can be really good for troubleshooting. Uh, all we really have to do though, and you're probably already thinking it, maybe even programmed it in, is that we just have to increment the x up. So x plus equals, there's no saying what would be the best value to bump up by, but since we're doing it um, 400 times, we just bump up by one each time. And now if I graph this, notice how it's going to streak across the y equals x line. Now it's not drawing, right? Because we picked the pen up. We're going to have to put that back down. So I would say, you can keep it in the loop. That's fine. T dot pen loop. So it'll keep putting the pen back down, which is fine. And we do have the color set to red bold. So it should, that part should certainly work. Hmm. Not sure why it streaked that line across, but um, this is the basic structure, and let's just change, let's see if it stays that way. The parabola we had in there, remember, was to do um, this box right here, where like this coordinate right here is not actually over one, up one. It's over 40 pixels, up 40. So to keep it simple, I think we might put a zoom function in. i got to see how hard it is to do that. But if I did y equals 1 divided by 40, so 40 times um, smaller. And then I did x squared would be, um, uh, let's just do to keep it simple, times x times x. So that's um, multiplying the coefficient of 1 over 40 times x squared. And then that would streak across, swoosh down. And we, we lost that streaking effect, so I don't know why that had happened on the previous one. Maybe just a glitch. But that's a good place to be for, where, for right now. We have got ourselves, we'll call this the... Um, I don't know. You can let the kids name it, but I'm going to call it the uh, painting points algorithm. Algorithm. It looks wrong for some reason to me. But that is like a sweeping effect, which is what you want to kind of get them down. So you can play with this now. Put in different stuff to get like trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent. You'll have to import a package called math. But go ahead and play around with stuff, and uh, we'll, we'll pick up back on one more day of this tomorrow. Thanks.